Um, so we've seen a, a couple of new um, therapies be approved, uh, FDA approved in the past few months for multiple myeloma, um, including Lansomab, Mapidotin, and um, Isatuximab. Can you um, talk about some of these new agents, um, including the data behind their approvals and your, your opinion on some of these new things we have? For sure. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, we can um, start with Belantamab mephidotin or called um, Belamef or Blendrep. Um, now there is a, this is obviously, this is the first of its class in the BCMA directed therapy. So this is an antibody drug conjugate means that there is a drug called MMAF, you know, which is attached to the antibody, which is against the BCMA on the cell surfaces, which is on the surface of all the plasma cells, or I would say the, the, the malignant plasma cells predominantly. So basically what this drug does is the antibody attaches it to the myeloma cell and the chemotoxin or the chemotherapy, which is attached to the antibody gets into the myeloma cells and destroys that. So I think it was innovative for two main reasons. You know, first is it's the first of its kind targeting BCMA in multiple myeloma. And the second thing we, this is the first of a kind of an antibody drug conjugate in myeloma. Now we do have a few antibody drug conjugates in other hematological malignancies or in just cancers itself, uh, but this was the first to see it. So I think that's first was the most impressive about this mechanism of action. The second very impressive thing about this was um, it's um, response rates. Now we have seen patients on the, the DREAM1 and the DREAM2 studies, which led to the, the approval of uh, the medication. We already are seeing that the response rates patients are getting are, are really um, excellent, you know, and, um, and even though the response rates were not amazing, maybe it was in the 30% ranges or so, we would have loved to see more obviously for our patients. It persisted, the progression-free survival was was um, was a, was excellent, I would say, when we are looking at non CAR T cell therapy. Now, I hate to compare the BCMA antibody drug conjugates or bispecifics to CAR T cell therapies. They are kind of comparing different modalities of treatment. So, you know, those are not direct comparisons. But when you look at, you know, therapies in that category where, you know, you are four line, five line, six line out with your treatment and there is, do you have a single agent drug with no dexamethasone in the treatment armamentum? It probably did. It it probably is one of the best options. You know, if you can think of combine is a is every three to four three week infusion, which is how it can be delivered with uh, you know minimal um, toxicities from other than obviously it's ocular challenges. Now that was, the, that's obviously we have learned that's the biggest challenge with it. It comes with the RAMS program or the certification where the patients have to be monitored for their eye toxicities of it. Now um, we have learned and, and as you know, we have had patients on clinical trials and, and then expanded access programs and, and getting ready as all the country gets ready for its commercial use in this upcoming months. Uh, we will start learning how how um, this is going on, how much more ocular issues are co going up, how is it going to be feasible for the patients, is it going to be feasible all around the country, is it feasible for a small community hospital, or it's going to be hard to get an eye care provider. And so I think it is, um, obviously, um, the industry, um, uh, the company is understanding those challenges by listening to a lot of um, the physicians around the country. So I hope there is more um, resources available for our patients to have access to these therapies, because this is certainly an important therapy available to our patients. Now, you know, what is exciting about this is with like any, any other anti, antibody um, drugs, uh, antibody drug conjugate or antibody directed therapies like we saw with daratumumab, this is obviously a potential of combination with other things, right? So belantamab is already looked as a combination with Velcade or, I mean, or bortezomib or lenalidomide or pomalidomide um, and, and multiple other things, including checkpoint inhibitors and other antibodies. So, so there is a potential to improve on that response rate and probably trying to limit the toxicities with it. And so, you know, that's the fine balance in any drug development we see and hope to see that it coming along in 
further in the development lines, maybe even, you know, there is already some studies being developed in the newly diagnosed setting where well, berlantamab will be given to patients who are just newly diagnosed in combination with Velcade and Revlimin. So I think there is, a, there, is, there is a lot of excitement from these compound and hopefully we can get even better response rates. I think your other um, combination, medic other medication was uh, isatuximab. Now, isatuximab is a CD30 directed antibody. Um, this is a second of its um, generation antibody in multiple myeloma. We have Darzelex or Daratumumab, which is the first CD38 directed antibody. Now, now um, uh, isatuximab has um, comes in with a uh, with a a slightly different way of how it attaches to CD38 and its length of activity and, and subtle changes in the mechanism of it. Um, so I think that was there was some nuances in how the drug itself works. In regards to its earlier lines, we have seen it as it, they did uh, one of the biggest phase three studies in combining with pomalidomide and showed very impressive results rate, which we would have, which we anticipated knowing some of the data, data behind daratumumab and pomalidomide used more in the real world than in commercial utility. So I think that step, that was first huge thing. Second thing is obviously this drug has become available to, um, you know, it's, it's a shorter infusion time. Uh, it is, it is by cost wise, it's a bit, it's, it's somewhat cheaper than daratumumab if I understand um, correctly. Now, obviously there are nuances to that, uh, but overall might be a cheaper uh, uh, alternative or an option from just the cost bucket of it. So I think there are, uh, um, uh, certainly some added benefits to it. Now it comes as a second um, antibody. So a lot of doctors have been using CD38 antibodies for a while now, close to four to five years. And so a lot of us have been kind of used to the, the Darzelex and now the sub-Q form of Darzelex came out called the FASPRO. Um, and so, you know, that that is certainly kind of taking off the IV medications out of the list and more and more people are focusing towards the sub-Q versions of it. So, you know, there are pros and cons of using um, Darzelex. I think the utility of redosing with the CD38 antibody, a different CD38 antibody after they've relapsed with one, I think there might be some avenues to explore with using a fisatuximab. So I think um, there are a few more CD38 antibodies um, which are in development by different companies, uh, which we had seen some phase one data from uh, at last ASH, if I'm not wrong. Um, and so I think that is um, CD38 is still a good target in myeloma we know of. And I think it will, time will tell what is, uh, what excitement um, we can get with the newer, the drug delivery or newer modalities of attacking CD38. And on that note, are there any um, other investigational agents um, not yet approved uh, in the pipeline that you're really interested in or keeping your eye on? Yeah, so I, I think um, obviously uh, a tons of them are out there coming up. And I think if I can just um, name some of them, um, you know, so I think what we have already started seeing it is I mentioned the CD38 from Takeda has one of the compounds, um, which is looking very interesting as a single agent activity. Now the cell modes, um, you know, which is the CC. Uh, 220 and the CC480s, uh, which are kind of the newer generations of uh, immune modulation drugs being out there uh, or cerebellum inhibitors uh, coming up from um, cell gene or BMS out there. I think they are looking really impressive in their early data as a single agent activity. Um, there is already combination trials with CC220 coming up in different phases and forms. So I think that is looking very good. Uh, I didn't really touch on any of the bispecific therapies that are about five different bispecific targeting BCMA from, or five different companies making BCMA targeted bispecific therapies. Um, but along those lines, I think we have different targets on bispecifics which are being developed. Now, every of those BCMA targeted bite, bites or bispecifics, however you say it, there are some nuances. One is sub-Q, one is IV, one is more CRS, one is less CRS, but these are very early in their development. So very hard to say that there are are they, the response rates are gonna be the same at the end of the day or not. Uh, but I think the, the interesting part is going to be the, the newer targets, you know, uh, and there is um, the GPR5 CD, which is as a bispecific, which is coming out of um, Janssen, which is going to be an interesting target. There is obviously interesting um, options in, in combination bispecific therapies, which are being developed. Um, so I think there is um, certainly excitement along, um, along those lines. <laughs>